Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. On this show, we talk about all things Japan in English. My name is Mitch and I'm here with... Alex, hello. I'm back again. You are back. <laughs> welcome back. How long has it been since you've been on the show? It's a long time. I've forgotten how to do it, to be honest with you. I think last year, November, December was your last episode or something like that. Probably, that sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, and now you're unshaven. Uh, yeah, I've not well. shaved since November. <laughs> Very slow beard that's growth. A, that's a slow burn. Slow but thick. <laughs> yeah. Here's a question for you. Okay, are you going to do that whole thing where you know, like if you if you get a little older, you start putting on a little bit of weight as a, as a man, you can kind of grow your beard and it doesn't yeah. look like you're overweight. I don't know anything about that. No, 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 no I'm serious. It's no. a thing. It's no, a no, thing. it doesn't bother me though because I'm in peak condition <laughs> physically. Roll that intro. <laughs> So in the intro now, we have uh, Ricky in there. And oh, it's, cool. It's, nice. a, it's amazing because Josh found this great footage of him that he surprised us with this. I think last week or the week before, I can't remember. Right. And uh, it's like, we all, and I was like, look, it's Alex. He just looks, you know, arrogant. Just, just look, he just look arrogant. That's, he looks lost. You know, cause <laughs> she, she's got a flag. She's guiding people. <laughs> and then look at this Ricky. Ricky. It's so great. He's in a dinosaur costume. I love it. No, uh, he usually dresses like that. Though, he? Uh, uh, Ricky's like... Ricky's uh, racially ambiguous. Yes, I know. You're like, you don't really know what he is. Yeah, it was not a dinosaur, I can tell you well, that. He's not, yeah. not a dinosaur. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start today's uh, show with some pressing news. It is the biggest story uh, of the century. It's sushi terrorism. It's vital videos, like trend on really? TikTok and things. Wow. How is this terrorism? It's not, it's not really any of those things. But what it is is uh it's a new trend mm -hmm. on tiktok and face uh instagram where kids mostly young men will do things like lick the the bowl or the cups in like the kaiten sushi what do you call it in english sushi go round yeah conveyor belt sushi sushi go round yeah I've never heard this before <laughs> if you google it it's, it's like it's one of the things in wikipedia sushi go around shut up or it was I really this, yeah anyway so they lick the stuff because like a lot of this stuff is like just left out and then you yeah, like yeah. you take the cups and everything yeah. so they'll lick it or like they'll one guy was like like there's a video of this i think like if, if josh can show it like this guy's like licking his fingers and like touching this the sushi and stuff like that Lick, licking the 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 uh soy sauce and is stuff this like in that. japan yeah this is in japan fuck off <clears throat> so this is um this is actually they reported this guy to the police this is actually a sushi roll but this has happened at all the major chains right and uh they reported this guy to the police and i think he was arrested i think he's 17 years old um and so it's uh it's actually a it's a stupid see it's like licking the cups and stuff it's a stupid trend that is so dumb yeah. I'm I'm so angry I can't speak. When was the last time you actually went to Kaiten Zushi? <laughs> never. <laughs> uh, not never, but not not recently. I only go to ones where they make it in front of you at the moment. Because uh, I'm, you know, raking it in. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not raking it in. No, but Kaiten Zushi is like, it's an experience. I love it. I especially like the ones that have like this Shinkansen, the bullet trains that bring oh, it, it out to you. comes out first, yeah. So yeah. good. Yeah, sushi. You know, I'm not into the kaiten sushi anymore. I've kind of well, got it's, bored of it. It's when you live here forever, it becomes like you know a McDonald's. Well, it's fast food, right? right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the thing is, they won't be able to do it forever. Um, soon, because of the overfishing of the oceans, you know, depressing news all around today. Um, they, 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 there's like projections that that kind of sushi experience will probably be gone within a decade or two. But those kind of you know what man farmed, human farmed fish or whatever. I've yeah. forgotten the word for it. Fish farms. Fish farms. <laughs> fish farms. Uh, you know, that, that they're going to produce some good quality fish, I think. When I, was, forwards, you know. when I was in Mexico, I saw all these fish farms off the coast of, mm -hmm. of the coastline of Mexico. I don't know if it's still there. And I asked one of my guides and I was like, hey, dude. I was like, what's all that shit? And he's like, oh, those are uh, tuna farms for Japanese restaurants. Right, okay. And I was like, holy shit, that's interesting. But I went to a sushi restaurant with a guy who eats a lot of sushi uh, recently. And he ate one bite and he just goes oh this is like from a fish farm i don't want it mm. he said he can tell immediately well so that, yeah, i don't know if that's cool or just kind of like it's kind of cool and annoying at the same time <laughs> you know what i mean well, i kind of respected it but at the same time i thought well mm, we've paid for it so <laughs> well there, there are there are some like you know downsides to fish farms obviously disease being mm -hmm. one of them and then also there's a there's there's an uh, an ecological uh, uh danger to them because Basically, it's fish poop. Yeah. If you concentrate a lot of fish poop in one area, yeah, you know, you delicious. Can, you can no, you can kill the, the surrounding environment. Yeah. Anyway, let's actually get to our real headline today. The the Luffy Luffy is that how you say this Luffy? Because it's a if it's based off the anime character, it's Luffy. Yeah, it's based off the the One Piece character. 
Okay. So, oh, the guy with the extendable uh, arms. <laughs> Never ever. Is that in, in, Inspector Gadget? No, it's this guy, isn't it? I have no idea. Inspector what... Gadget's got extendable appendages as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay anyway uh so so this L- luffy uh gang basically we, we talked about this last week these guys uh supposedly allegedly uh from the philippines are like calling people in japan and like recruiting hoodlums to uh, like like gangster people like bad guys to go around and like rob people and i think they're up to some ridiculous amount of money now i forgot what the the, the sum was but like they were they were supposedly the suspects for this were supposedly arrested and now they're facing extradition to Japan but i think one of them is actually still on trial in the philippines so the, his extradition is like unknown at this time like whether or not he'll be uh, like be able to come back here to face trial wow so you know i mean like this resulted in one death and then i'm trying to find the the amount but it's like some ridiculous amount of money that they've stolen already so these Japanese people go to the Philippines and basically extort people and get money out of no, it. No, no, no. So there's, there's, there's these two bad guys, supposedly, went to the Philippines and then they started recruiting Japanese people in Japan from the Philippines. Oh, I see. Okay. And then having them rob people that they somehow got information about. Like one of these robberies like, was an old woman who had like a, like a ridiculous amount of money, like $100,000 worth of cash in her house and gold bullion. Really? And they, 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 they rocked it in her house and they stole all of her stuff. And interesting because usually they outsource from the Philippines so it's interesting that somebody's created a, a business where you outsource <laughs> Japanese workers to to the Philippines instead yeah but in I, a way that's commendable it's just it's just gangsters <laughs> and then like two of them supposedly live in the in the Philippines right I see yeah, yeah. so among the cases of the mur- murder robbery of the 90 year old I'm not gonna read her name uh, in her and she was that was the one with the with the all the money and then they murdered her and they took her money and her gold so if these are actually the bad guys I hope that they <clears throat> get uh, get their gets justice served because fuck that shit. They're comeuppance. They're comeuppance. Yeah, I can't find the total amount of money stolen, but from that specific uh, case that you mentioned, they stole thirty five million yen. So that's about two hundred and seventy one thousand dollars in the, in cash and gold. I think the total was somewhere around like forty million US. <clears throat> was like what they've stolen over the years. Hmm. And what they'll do is they'll recruit these guys online. And one of the guys that were arrested was who said that once they knew the guys in the Philippines, allegedly, all this is alleged, knew that uh, his the, the guy in Japan's personal information, he felt like if he didn't do the things that they'd dox him or hurt his family. Right. I see. So, then the, you know, the, these these kind of probably out of work, you know, not in the best time in their life, the best, best you know position in their life, guys get, you know, wound up in this like kind of crime world and then they get blackmailed to stay in there and do other things yeah well summary don't join a criminal gang yeah just don't break the law yes okay Draw right you. different story here another sad one unfortunately uh recent news uh a foreign skier has been killed uh, in an avalanche actually two people died uh including a world champion freestyle skier in uh otari uh over the weekend well last week it was um so off country, uh, back off piece, you know, back country skiing is quite popular in Japan. Yeah, very popular, supposedly. Yeah, um, and these guys had actually come to do, I believe, a promotional campaign as well. So they'd got some funding from a local tourism promotion board, <clears throat> um, and were out there as professionals as well. But got trapped in an avalanche and unfortunately uh, died as well. So you know, uh, you wouldn't imagine really it would be that dangerous in Japan. I don't think. You know, you hear about off piece skiing in like Alaska or somewhere like that, and think it might be super dangerous, but. You know, even in Japan, this kind of thing can happen. So what what they talked about in the article as well is that in Japan, because the the weather here, you get really, really like soft snow. Yeah. It's not compacted. But what will happen is like if it doesn't continuously snow, it'll warm up during the day and it'll kind of melt the snow and then it'll freeze again overnight right, okay. and then snow on top of it again, which makes this perfect storm for an avalanche. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in Alaska and stuff like that, it's just frozen all the time. So you don't get that. Yeah. So, I mean, it is skiing is, is dangerous. I mean, people think skiing is just like, you know, fun for the family. And usually it is. But, you know, um, Cher's husband, what's his name? Sonny? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He died from a skiing accident. And he crashed into a tree. He crashed he? into a yeah. tree. Yep. So, you know, I mean, people, he knew the risks, I imagine. Um, professional skier as well. Yeah. Um, you know, these things do happen. I think some people were criticizing the tourism promotion body for providing funding for them. Yeah. But to be honest with you, I mean, you know the risks if you do something like that. And I'm sure they signed disclaimers and things like that before they went off piste. I think they dropped them by helicopter as well. Yeah. 
So, you know, um, in that situation, it's just an unfortunate accident. I well, think. not only that, but it's up to the, the, the person, the skiers to have, you know, agency and say, OK, well, today's conditions look acceptable or today's conditions don't look acceptable. Yeah. Um, a completely kind of related, kind of unrelated story. There is these, uh, I think they're called volcanists. What's a vol- volcano person called? I think they're called a volcanist. Vulcans. Vulcans. We, we reference Star Trek so much on the show. It's yeah. ridiculous. I've not watched Star Trek for years. I've watched Next Generation and then just... TNG that, was peak it. sci-fi. I still I, I keep that. Is it called a Vulcanist? Vulcan... Vulcanologist? Vulcanologist. Vulcanologist. These two, the, they were a married couple from Fra- France. I think they were French. They went to Nagasaki to see uh, Uzen. The right. volcano there, mm-hmm. and it's you can you can watch this on on YouTube. The, the, the newsreel is still there. They like one of the the TV reporters because it started to get a little active. Mm-hmm. One of the TV reporters go, you know, aren't you afraid? Because these guys had been to all the volcanoes in Hawaii and all these other places, and they're like, aren't you afraid? As you know, it's kind of dangerous, and like you know, because as the French do, he's like, oh, it's such a small, tiny, baby volcano. Blah blah blah. We'll right. be fine. Mm-hmm. And uh, they got caught in a pyroclastic flow, and they died. Yeah. Yeah. So well, you um, never know, do you? you know. Don't underestimate nature. There's a one of the comments on that article is like, Japan is easy mode. It's like the starting zone in any game. Like no one's gonna take your money. Like it's just you know very safe, very you know clean environment with you know great food and everything. But Mother Nature will fucking kill you. Yeah, no, it's true, man. I mean, look at place names in Japan are a good hint. Actually, they say um, so when people have changed the name of the place. They often forget about the reason why the original kanji were like they were. Uh. So there's a place in, for example, Kagoshima called Ryugamizu, which is like um, kind of dragon water or whatever. Yeah. And it's because the water comes off the mountain really quickly and uh. steeply. Um, so, you know, the place names give a hint to the kind of natural dangers that face these places. In 311, the big earthquake tsunami, there was these little placards in the ground that said, don't build your house below this point. Mm. And then, like, the builders just, like, ripped them out and threw them away. And they're like, what is this shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Yeah, ignore nature at your peril. Yeah. Uh, exactly. You know, when I got my boating license here in Japan, like, that was the one thing that they kept telling me. was like, they're like, you know, one of the major deaths, like, uh, causes of death for young people is actually, like, just, like, boat, like, you know, pleasure uh, activities, like boating or skiing and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. I said, watch your shit. Uh, net population influx into Tokyo accelerates for the first time in three years. The summary of this, this uh, article is there was a pandemic. People were working remotely, so there's no need to move to Tokyo. And now that that's over, people are moving back to Tokyo. End of my story. Yes. I mean, I, like to be honest with you, right? I thought remote work would kind of kick off a new kind of way of working in Japan post-pandemic, but it doesn't really seem to have done that. People are going back to the modes of work from before. Now you can have an online meeting, sure, no. but you can't do networking. Or anything like that remotely. Well, so. the Silicon Valley also had the same thing. They're like, I mean, that's why Apple and Facebook and Tesla and all those big companies are just like, come back to the office. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they're like, when people are all spread out, it's like, it's just difficult to have that. You know, they, 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 in Silicon Valley, they have this idea of like these, uh, what is it called? The, the, the random collisions is what they wanted to create. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like where, you know, the guy from accounting and the guy from advertising meet each other at the water cooler and all of a sudden they birth up this new idea that neither of them would have had independently. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to like facilitate that kind of like, you know, camaraderie. And uh, what they did is they made these ridiculous open floor office plans that don't work at all. But it's easier to have top of mind with other people if you're, present in their kind of office space as yeah. well so i mean i walked into some big government offices the other day in tokyo and walked past about you know 150 people all sat working and then two of those people looked me up on linkedin because i've got a gold account so i can see who's looking at me or whatever <laughs> and then and then somebody else emailed me and said do you want to be a part of this project we're doing you know just because they saw you and thought oh yeah that guy you yeah, know you know yeah. it does work like that and it's it's important to have those kind of connections um, well, I think that uh, remote isn't going to truly get remote until we get a situation where it's like Ready Player One, where you're like fully immersed into a, a virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Until we get to that level, I think that we we can't completely remote. I do think that the pandemic did make things more convenient and sped up a lot of like onlining that Japan was really putting off and being really annoying about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it didn't change everything forever. Like, yeah. Thought. But, oh, well. Um, what do you got next? I've got reskilling. Oh, let's do that. Let's do reskilling. So Prime Minister Kishida's made a remark about um, women reskilling during childcare. And mm-hmm. this has uh, sparked some controversy online. So he's had uh, scathing criticism on social media uh, with people suggesting that politicians lack understanding of the demands of child rearing 
Uh, the suggestion is that people uh, use the time while taking care of the child to actually get a degree or kind of learn a new skill or something like that. Right. Uh, and then when they go back to work, they can be more valuable or more productive. But, um, you know, there's been quotes in this article saying, you know, tweets about it saying, try getting a d degree while taking care of your own child. This is an administration of helpless old men, you know, that kind of thing. So I do understand that, you know, it's it's very difficult to to raise a child at home and concentrate on doing something at the same time. It's not really tenable, I don't think. But at the same time, you know, continuous progression and skill advancement is really important. So taking those opportunities to, to learn new skills is good too. But I've got a friend in Tokyo actually who um, was uh, kind of a worker at a company. Then she had a, a child and then did looking after the kids for like, I think 15, 20 years or something like that. And then she went back to work afterwards. And she was saying that a lot of the skills you learn actually running a household are mm. equally applicable in business. Oh. Because you're doing accounting for the finances, you know, you're doing people management, you're doing timetable schedules, you know, thinking about lots of different people's needs at the same time. So actually just looking after kids itself is actually a huge skill set that can be applied in other fields if you can transfer it. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's also very valuable too. I can see this from both sides. I mean, I am no fan of Kushida. I think he should be replaced as soon as possible. Um, but I do think that if you look at the the pay gap, the gender pay gap, you know, it's it, people on the left they like to say it's 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 sexism. And, and if you actually analyze the gap, there is a gap uh, and there's a reason for there to be a gap. Um, if you actually analyze it, there is a uh, like a, a discrepancy that we can't explain. So that might be sexism, but that's like maybe one or two percent. Mm -hmm. The rest of it is easily explainable. And the biggest part of the pay gap is that women have to have babies mm. so to, to continue the population. And so if they have a baby, they're taken out of the workforce for X amount of years. And then they either never return or when they do return, they're well behind their male counterparts who never had to take time off to have a kid. Mm. That's basically it. Yeah. Women have babies. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's the whole thing. And so um, you get the situation where, okay, so what she didn't want to say, probably, maybe, is that while they're away on maternity leave, is there a way to keep their skills relevant, keep them in, you know, you know, not have this like gap? Yeah, I am. So mm -hmm. I can understand that. But at the same time, suggesting that, oh, you know, you're on vacation, so you're not doing anything. You can just study, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. You're not on vacation. You're Level raising up. a fucking yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah. So what I think the, the government should do, and this is like the, this is the, the happy middle, is I do think that for, because some people have babies and they have easy mode babies, mm -hmm. babies that go to sleep on time, sleep through the night. And then, you know, they never have, they never cry. They never throw a fit. And maybe they only want one baby. So they're not managing other children at the same time. So maybe in that situation, maybe the mommy says, okay, I would like to be able to go online and take a course. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> having support for that, having the option to do that and having the government like back that financially, good thing. Saying to a mom, hey, you know what? You're not doing anything. Once, yeah. you, get in, once you get your ass in gear, it's fucking just stupid. So what they should do is work on childcare services. So yeah. hoiku and yochi and things like that, kindergarten where people can take the kids if they need to go to work. There should be more support for that. There should be more community support for people who've just had children and kind of stuck in the house. A lot of people feel separated from society. Yeah. You know, uh, don't have anybody to talk to. You can't really talk to people like you can in the West perhaps mm. about your kind of psychological problems or whatever. Um, so that needs to be there. And then obviously, you know, flexible work as well because Japanese companies have very kind of rigid modes of work. Mm. So why not change that? You can change the hours. You can change... You know, also the the processes. the uh, there's like a taboo, uh, you know, about women who put their kids into Hoikwen daycare mm -hmm. while they're <clears throat> going to work and stuff like that. And so we need to destigmatize that whole thing. Yeah, if we don't do that. I mean, like, because you know, 50 percent of the population. Getting back to Star Trek, uh, there's a there's a D the Deep Space Nine episode where the Ferengi, right, who are like. I don't want to say it, but I think that they were modeled. They're like racist against basic Jewish people. I think they are. Also, instead of having a big nose, they've got big ears. Yeah, no, the, no, I think that's what it is. I think it's just anti-Semitism in, in Star Trek. But anyway, right. so, they, but this is when they first appeared, but then they flushed them out as characters and they kind of like went away from that stereotype. Sure, yeah. But anyway, so the Ferengi had this thing like they're on their home world, the women aren't allowed to work and they're not even allowed to wear clothes. All right. And then one day, like, uh, Quark had, like, the idea, like, if you let women into the workforce, I think his mom actually had the idea, then he championed it. But, like, if you let women into the, the workforce, not only do you increase your, your output by 50%, you also increase your consumption by 50%. Right. And he's like, allowing women to wear clothes means that you have 
half the population, doubling the population of consumers. Mm -hmm. As if you think about that in Japan, like if all the women just stay at home and never ever go to work, that's a huge missed opportunity, especially if you account for all the education that they received getting up to, you know, child rearing age. Yeah. So having those support systems there to let them have a family and also have them be in the workforce, even, you know, like you said, part time or something like that. I think would do a lot to help the economy. Well, there's a lot of tools now coming out as well. Actually, the next story is about AI, but it's relevant. Um, you know, you can magnify your potential output at work, you know, 10 times, 100 times. If with, you're efficient. With tools that are going to come out in the next couple of years, yeah. you know. So I think this is like a big opportunity for people to really think about their output and productivity and hopefully give them more time to think as well and have free time to do interesting things like this podcast. <laughs> Um, which I haven't had time to do, unfortunately. Before <laughs> before you get to that year. that uh, story, I have, I have four kind of negative stories, so let me get through those really quick. Okay. So Japan court nixes university's dismissal of English teacher before unfixed contract eligibility. So basically, uh, an individual, I don't like to name people in this show, it's, it's more about the stories than it is the actual, the, the people's names. So a 62-year-old, uh, 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 I think it's a Brazilian man, uh, basically foreign natural, na national, was working at a university teaching medical English. And basically, he was on this like yearly re recurring contract and then right before he was to convert to a fixed term labor contract uh, he was let go with no right. real reason yeah, yeah he sued the court said yeah it was kind of weird no not reasonable under socially accepted norms to do that which mm -hmm. means you guys are being racist what the fuck right and they said you got to pay for all of his backed wages that you didn't pay him and then also reinstate him now this is a real problem for a couple of reasons one like if you're an English teacher in Japan, basically like if you're not at a like a, a, a good place, like if you're at, at our school, for example, um, you, you have like a, a, a contract that's like there's no term limit on it. We support mm -hmm. your visa, whatever type of visa that you like to you want to get spousal. If you're going for your permanent residency, if you're eligible, we'll support all that stuff. A lot of places don't do that. Mm -hmm. They're just like, oh, you're the foreign thing. OK, here's your one year contract, yeah, your yeah. one year visa. Mm -hmm. Do what we say or we'll cut your support. And so there's there's a lot of places like that in Japan, unfortunately. Um, and this guy fought back and won, so good for that. But the other, the, but the the problem is, is now he's got to work with all these people he just sued. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's the thing. Like, let me you haken shine. You know, these kind of like contract workers and things like that. The idea is to keep you away from getting into the company, so you're easily fireable. Yeah. Because once you're an employee, it's actually quite hard to get rid of you. Yep. Um. So you know there is that kind of mentality in Japan. And especially to foreign people, it's like you will go home at some point. Yeah. So all these like Jishu say the um what's it called? Trainee people coming from like Vietnam and countries yeah. like that to learn farming or whatever. It's like a three or four year contract and then go back home. That's understandable because even like America did that with the Japanese after World War II. A lot of Japanese farmers went to America to learn farming, and then came back to Japan and then mm -hmm. used those techniques here. I mean that's fine. But one of the, one of the things that one of the comments that were on that article that stuck out to me was that Here's an issue, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to my friends who are actually working in Japan as English teachers. If you're here and you're on any type of visa, consider your skill set. I mean, myself and Alex did this, I think, year one as an ALT. It's like, okay, what are our skill sets? What can we learn? What can we make ourselves to be a more valuable employee and a more you know, desirable you know, candidate when we go for an interview or something like that? And one of the big things that I see, uh, I'm not, I don't know if this 62-year-old falls in this category, but one of the big things that I see with like kind of lifetime English teachers is they never learn Japanese. Mm. And if you never learn Japanese, you're going to have a hard time living here and you're going to have a long, uh, hard time like getting accepted to the society, finding, a good, finding good jobs and things like that you just kind of always be like loner like style and that's just not that's not good so i would definitely work on my skill set and try to learn japanese but well even when you do learn japanese it doesn't really get any easier to be honest with you because well you just have you you go for har harder and harder challenges yeah i know you're just going for more end game end, end game content no i'm totally stupid so i just <laughs> keep you know pushing buttons when I shouldn't do. Wait, wait, let me get through my last uh, these. Okay, so uh, next story. Wo woman who served in the self-defense for forces sues state assailants over sexual harassment. Now, that's actually a misnomer because it's not, this is not sexual harassment. This is actually just sexual abuse. Um, so a woman who says that she loves the self-defense for a 23-year-old said during a press conference that the national uh, blah, 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 in Tokyo said that she filed the, the suit not out of feelings of ill will towards the self-defense forces, but at the desire to prevent these things from happening again. Mm. I'm not going to say her name. We'll subject the to a wide range of abuse on a daily basis from fall 2020 through August 2021. After quit, quitting the, the GSDF in June last year, she began uh, posting online under her own name about her abuse and submitted a petition to the Defense Ministry calling for an investigation. And the, e, 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 let me get it 
here it goes. Her lawyers told press conference uh, told the press conference the abuse exceeded harassment and constitu- uh, constituted criminal behavior as she endured groping, kissing, among other actions, in addition to daily sexual comments. Mm. So uh, it resulted in five people being fired and a supervisor like being demoted. So. Yeah. The problem is if you want to stand up and make your case heard, you're going to have to get ready to get bashed a lot in, in Japan. I you mean, know, well, that's kind of anywhere, but but yeah but I think it's more so it's harder to gain support yeah you know what I mean because um, well, they do the whole like victim blaming thing here like yeah. even when you get in a car accident you can't have 100% 0% liability it's mm. always like yeah but you had a little bit of fault because you were in the way of the guy who was drunk driving yeah yeah, yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> Uh, next uh, serious story. Groper arrested in... That's kind of serious. Groper arrested in Japan insists he did not grab both boobs. Just one. Okay, so here, here's the thing. He didn't gra- he use the back of his hands or something like that. So it's not groping. So Or elbows. Okay. This is, this is a linguistic problem, okay? So he... <laughs> he's a, he, he was arrested and admitted to, to groping a woman, mm-hmm. okay? But you got to understand, well, you know this and we all know this, but people at home, uh, in Japan, nouns don't have a plural. Mm -hmm. So they could be either plural or singular. Yeah. So when he was accused of groping her mune, which is breast, right? Mm -hmm. He commented that he said, yeah, I touched her breast, but it was not dyo mune. So not both. Not both breasts. Okay. So... So that's 50% less bad. Is it? <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to work out all the, the, the differences. Whatever. Oh, God. I don't know. This came out of just where, like... Where did this happen anyway? What's, uh, what's the situation? Tochi, to, tochigi. In Nikko Tochigi. Nikko. I was there recently. Yeah. It wasn't me. It was a six-year-old too. Whatever. <laughs> really? Jeez. Yeah. All right. Last one. Last serious one. Okay. <laughs> this is actually the most fucked up story that we have today. Um, so death row, Im- death row inmates, uh, lawyers call for discussion, less sec- uh, secrecy on executions in Japan. Mm. So in Osaka, in the Osaka lawsuit fl- filed last November, the lawyers are representing three inmates awaiting execution at the Osaka detention center. They are seeking compensation uh, from the state over three points said to violate the constitution. Executions carried out while appeals are pending, which is fucking fucked up. Those carried out on the same day after inmates are notified in the morning, like Jesus. today's the day, <laughs> uh, an execution by hanging, which they claim is cruel. So let me go over the three things really quick. So the Japanese legal system is like an opaque box of like things that really need to be shown to the public. Mm. Like they need to overhaul that right away. I've been saying this is an ongoing theme on this, on the show, like serious human like rights violations in that, that needs to be fixed. One, two, the, the idea of like telling the people the morning that they're going to be executed. There's, there's, the if I'm going to play, play devil's advocate, their side of this is saying, well, if they know when they're going to die, then they'll stress about it until the day that they die. So we just tell them, right? Like today's the day, so they stress for a little bit. It's mm. like, yeah, but they know that it's going to happen one day. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then the last thing is like the hanging thing is like, yeah, I mean that's brutally like barbaric. They need to stop. I mean, I don't think any any I don't think any nation should have the ability to execute their own citizens. I just don't think that should be a thing. Mm. Life in prison for everybody who does something fucked up. Don't don't because once you can kill somebody, I mean the 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 value of a human life is diminished in the eyes of the state. And also the state is not always right. So if you could say with 100% certainty that every single execution every single time always was always right, mm. but you fucking can't, then maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Mm. That's it. True. Let's go on to something more fun. Okay, a bit more lighthearted stuff from me. Uh, so we've got Japan has developed an AI suitcase, which is a replacement for guide dogs. Actually, no, that's not an upbeat story, is it? No, it's actually kind of cool. Well, you, you're feeling bad for the dogs? No, the dogs are out of work, man. <laughs> I don't want to see unemployed dogs. No, they'll, they'll just be our friends and they don't have to work anymore. They'll have a, love, a, a life of leisure. Dogs don't want that. They want to be I know. helpful. I know. They want to be p- that part of the pack. I am just feel sad about the unemployed dogs now. I don't know if I can go on. Yeah, you can, because okay. it's about okay. AI, your new, fu- your new Oh, yeah, my thing. friend AI. <laughs> I submit to our robotic overlords. Um, yeah, so there's a new automated device. You know, basically those suitcases that follow you around when you walk at the airport, which I do not trust. 
Mm. You know, that's not a level where I'm... Have you seen the, the chairs that return to their base by themselves and they, like, take people to where they're supposed to go? Yeah, I sat in one once and somebody told me to get out of it. Yeah, you're not supposed to, not supposed to do that. Oh, I don't know. I thought it was just for like, anybody to use. <laughs> that carnival know? ride, man. I was like, well, cool, this looks fun. No, because they... It, it, but it stopped right in front of me. So I was like, oh, thank you. It's, it's like, get the fuck out of my way. And you're like, should I sit in you? What is, what's going on here? I'll sit here. And then they're like, ah, oh, and they all came running out. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um... <laughs> So basically, the suitcases that follow you around. Yeah. Somebody's had the bright idea of replacing guide dogs with those. Yeah. Uh, for the visually impaired, mm. so they can find themselves, find their way around town or whatever. Um, and people are fairly impressed with it. Uh, this guy who did the demonstration said that, uh, sorry, lady that did the demonstration said she's usually careful to walk straight, and she was impressed she could get to the station with so little hassle. So it seems to be working. They've also got headphones where they tell you which way to go and stuff like that. And the GPS system has got a 10 centimeter margin of error. So it's pretty accurate as well. 10 centimeter GPS margin of error I don't in believe Japan. That. That's impossible. Yeah, I know. Especially if you, like, I was in um, uh, Toronamon yesterday, or, no, yesterday, day before yesterday, uh, looking at Google Maps, trying to find their office. And it was just spinning around like a motherfucker. Go, so, go to Shinjuku, go to Shibuya. Like, because all the tall concrete buildings, you're not in line of sight of two or th two of the three satellites. Yeah. So the GPS is like, pff, fuck, I don't God, know. I can see this suitcases in the middle of the fucking road and just disaster. <laughs> Dead person. And yeah. like got hit by a car. The suitcase is just going on its merry way. And the dog is sat on his little retirement bed thinking, <laughs> told you so. Told you so. What I'm worried about is the dogs, man, because Japan does put dogs down like quite quickly. So I think that, you know. Yeah, we, we were having this conversation because a friend of mine uh, is uh, looking for a new. I, I, I told him I he's. He got he got a husky in <clears throat> in Tokyo. Idiots. And I was like, you realize a husky is a needy ass dog yeah. is going to grow to like ginormous size and you're going to have to walk it all the fucking time. And yeah. he's like, yeah, I love it so much. It'll be so great. And I mean, this kid, he's got more money than brains. And I was just like, no, you can. And then now it is a year later. It's like, my dog's too big. Yeah. Can you help me find a home for it? <laughs> yeah. Husky's a massive responsibility to yeah. take on. It's a beautiful yeah. dog. If I had time in a sp in space i and maybe a family yeah i would get it but like man it's just no no it's not responsible at all no so bad bad decision -making. how many stories you got i've got two more three more four okay more. Well, go through yours let's my, do it mine are all just dumb from this point forward okay so the world's largest type of daikon radish the sakurajima daikon famous from kagoshima yeah uh, can now be ordered online in japan <clears throat> uh, and good news it's uh, available in manageable portions. So there's a, a ruler showing how long it is. How long is that? 20 centimeters. Well, that's what most people claim. I'm not going to go anywhere. <laughs> I was just wondering where we could go with this one. She's groping it with both hands, Why? look, <laughs> with gloves on. That's perfect placement for the daikon. That's, after good, that that's good groping, that. She's got no can fingerprints. You, can you well. explain why these are it, like grow, they grow like this? Yeah, it's magic. <laughs> so basically uh sakurajima is a wellspring of natural magic and that's why <laughs> that's why the the daikon are massive and the oranges are tiny it's because it's a volcanic island and so the topsoil is very very soft the top of it gets harder as you go down and so instead of growing down like most daikon they grow, grow they grow sideways. out yeah. yeah yeah so they weigh <laughs> over 10 kilograms each and have even made the guinness uh, book of world records hazard um, so yeah there's some comments on this saying it must be a lot of manual labor to get these out of the ground and oh look at the frilly leaves that belong to this huge daikon uh, and things like that so great there are only five farmers in Japan that grow these uh, native species of sakurajima daikon so please buy lots of them and, and eat them all up sakurajima has two claims to fame for produce one is the sakurajima daikon the other one is where your people first encountered the mikan uh, allegedly, yes. Yeah. In which they called it a Satsuma, because that's the name of this region. So that's mm, yeah, slightly different. So Sakurajima Komikan, the tiny little ones that grow in Sakurajima, are the world's smallest peelable orange. But apparently when the British came, uh, they were given, I think they were given Unshu Mikan, which is a slightly different variety. Whatever. Which is the normal Satsuma. Mine's like the Disney version of this. It's much more simple. So Satsuma. Okay. So that's why they're called Satsuma, and that's why there's like four counties in America called Satsuma, where they grow oranges. That's true, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So thanks, British people. Nice fact. <laughs> from the brain of Mitch. <laughs> I only remember the, the meat. We've talked about this before. The details aren't important. You remember the easy version and Disneyfy it. Yeah. And then Las I'm, Vegas. Dude, it. No, seriously, there are like Disney characters in my brain right now, like with the British. They're like, oh, hello, Japanese people. They're like, hello, Mikan. Japanese man. Have and, a, oh, what's this? Like, it's Satsuma. an orange. <laughs> Let's take this abroad and eat it. And then there's country. a sing along directly after that scene. My God. It's amazing. Everything's a stage show in your head. What's wrong with this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. Everything's fantastic. I can imagine. I just want to see the world through Misha's eyes. No, it's great. It's great. it's great. It really is. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Uh, Dude, we have a, a mutual British friend. He has one positive adjective. You guys don't do positivity. He's yeah. got one. It's nice. Everything's fucking nice. That, that is the highest level compliment. <laughs> what are you talking about? Nothing is awesome or amazing or spectacular. Just, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. That's What's wrong with that? You guys are fucking full. How of, can you get better than that? That's why it rains all the time. You what? guys might be the inspiration for the Ferengi. Because uh, on Fer- Ferengi, it rains every day and they have 160 words for rain yes well we have like at least five i'm gonna make a star trek channel that's what i'm gonna do it's my calling star trek channel you can do it in here we've got the set <laughs> Just yeah, get in the background yeah. get taken down for copyright yeah uh you know what i really want to do i want to i want to uh reprogram my google home pods yeah to respond to computer right okay is computer. really what i want to do computer engage the holodeck <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sorry, good day with your story. Okay, stop. I want to talk about jizz. Okay. Um, So over 500 women in Japan use an overseas sperm bank as demand grows, apparently. So there's a company in Denmark uh, that is a sperm bank. And in the last three and a half years, uh, the company has seen incredible demand from Japan. So more than 500 women have ordered uh, some lovely sperm. Some happy babies online. Uh, over 1,000 registered donors uh, as well. Um, and basically, uh, they're giving the sperm to single women, sexual minorities, and women with infertile husband in Japan since launching in 2019. So, yeah. Um, people want some foreign sperm, I guess. <laughs> what well, do you want it, to it, say? I mean, my comment about this is that the Danish people, it's like, Good choice. I mean, they're tall. They tall, seem relatively peaceful. True. Tall, yeah. blonde hair, blue eyes. I mean, you mix that with Japanese and it, it doesn't turn blonde or blue. It just, just goes, goes a little bit lighter shade of brown is usually yeah. what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get basically my natural hair color, which is not blonde. So this is weird. I mean, it's like um, in one way, yeah, but you know, in, in another <laughs> yeah, sense, yeah. like, yeah. are you doing this for like a fashion <laughs> accessory? <laughs> you know, um, I don't know what to think about this. Yeah, I, don't really have an I really don't have an opinion. The, the one thing that's interesting about the story is that they can't get the procedure done in Japan because they'll only do IVF for married couples for most places, so they have to actually go right there. I wonder how much it costs. Like, would like a a, a nice <laughs> would a nice dinner and a hotel room for a night, a five star hotel room. No, but be, you get you get to pick your donors, and so like you get to pick their. They're like you got to pick who you go to fucking dinner with as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just go, you, you know. I- I don't see it's that difficult, right? So, yeah, but in this world, I think a lot of people just want. To, well, if sexual minorities, for example, like yeah, yeah. you know, if you're a two female couple and they want to have a child, yeah, right? yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. Yeah, um, but I think what you got to think about is that how like mixed race kids are um, educated in Japan as well, because yeah. the population is ninety or nine percent Japanese or whatever. I mean, you have mi- mixed race kids. Yeah, so and you it's, would know. it's tough. It's not easy. You know, they get. Uh, you know they stand out at school and obviously when you're a teenager you don't want to stand out right yeah um so it's another thing to pick on um so you've got to kind of think about those things as well and especially being a single parent family that can be quite difficult too yeah so you know there are many many factors to consider beyond just the availability um there are some kind of cultural issues with it as well yeah. but you know if somebody wants to have a child and they're unable uh, unable to do that you know um in the kind of well what would you say the regular way i suppose um, I'd say the, the regular because like we can't even, like recently we can't even call people like sane or insane. It's just like neurotypical. Oh, that's neuro just bollocks. Atypical. Oh, it really annoys me. I mean, <laughs> what is neuro atypical? That just means you're weird. <laughs> and like they're going, oh, you can't define a man or a woman and stuff like that. In foreign media, have you seen that? I I was totally on board with like a man is man or a woman is a woman, and then I saw a TED talk. And I was like, I, and then, cause it's like, I'll, I'll send it to you later. And then I was like, now I don't, I don't have an opinion anymore. It's not that I have a strong opinion either way. I just don't have an opinion anymore. No, it's I, like, no, no, because not, not, not because if you go to the typical case, it's very easy to, to define a biological male and a biological female mm. for 
most hundred almost 100 percent of the cases mm-hmm. but there are every now and then these like outlier cases where i'm like okay well what do we do in this case and that and that got me thinking but those extra cases should not necessarily no, no, I, determine the use of we are not getting into this conversation right now 99 percent of people's language can we get back to the the danes <laughs> yeah i've just thrown the danish sperm on the floor oh my God. The, the floor is covered with do Danish... Manga artist wants stop. Japanese teachers <laughs> to, to feel for two seconds how dumb their girl's dress code is. The gist of this... Should I said it? The gist yeah. of this story is... The gist of this story. The gist of this story is that what? basically Japanese girls in school are sometimes made to, depending on the school, made to ha- have to wear only a skirt with specially approved socks, even in the minus temperatures of winter specially approved socks yeah What's because they mean? used to do this thing in the 80s and 90s called loose socks oh right yeah and yeah. so then they like they made like approved socks mm. anyway it's dumb i think the girls should be able to wear insulated pants just like everybody fucking else does and it's stupid and you no know, it doesn't make you stronger to cold what they always say is like oh if we freeze the kids like when you see elementary school kids in their fucking summer uniform in the middle of winter it's like oh it's gonna toughen them yeah. up no you guys are poor after the war and you can only afford summer uniforms yeah and then you made all these policies based upon that i was laughing because you see the it. little like kids walking along like the boys especially with the shorts and the legs are like purple because it's so fucking yeah. cold outside it, and i feel sorry for them and you laugh and here we go that's the difference in our personality yeah i'm like haha let me uh oh wait you get through the last two and then i got two stupid ones okay i was suddenly fired what's this i've not read this one so i have no idea what it's about what this? there you go oh no we yeah, will skip just that. we'll skip that one because we already kind of went past that all we'll, right so we'll, i've got one about uh, a cushion Oh, then wait on that one. All right. Ah, hmm? uh, no, no, you can do that one. Yeah, let's do that one. That's this is fine. We got a we got a graphic for this. Okay, so I've got a headline here: Never oversleep again under the stern supervision of Japan's threatening red panda nap cushion, which I've literally no idea what this means. Oh my god, <laughs> that looks totally uncomfortable. Um, so basically, somebody has invented a gift. Um, which is called a threatening red panda nap cushion, and it's available for six thousand seven hundred yen, <laughs> uh, US fifty one dollars. Uh, this adorably dangerous pillow um, or cushion includes a soft green pillow designed to look like grass and a stuffed red panda standing on its hind legs, ready to claw the fuck out of your face. Um, so, why on earth would you want that? Is number one question. And number two is, how would that wake you up if your eyes are fucking closed anyway? You wouldn't be able to get to sleep, surely. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's so stupid. Don't you think? You'd be terrified that it was going to pounce on you. You'd, you'd put that up once because it just basically, it just like plugs into the pillow, right? Yeah. You'd put oh, it, it in one in. once and then you'd be like, oh, isn't this funny? You go to sleep with it, realize it's annoying and then forget about it. It just becomes waste. Or just never buy it. <laughs> so I, mean, right. I don't want to diss them, but. Let's go. Let's go. I forgot about a, a headline that I, that I, I wanted to put in the show and we have to, we have to mention this now. Here we go. Go. The decluttering queen and Netflix's star uh, star new book notes that uh, what sparks joy in her life has changed. Is it Danish jizz? Marie, <laughs> Marie Kondo admits she's kind of given up on tidying up. Oh my God. After having three kids. Yeah, you fucking would do. Up yeah. until now, I was a professional tidier, so I did my best to keep my home tidy at all times, she said in a recent interview. I have now kind of given up on that. No shit. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the world of parenting. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fucking amazing? Natsuki was feeling really depressed because her kids got sick and she couldn't have a home party and her house was a mess and she was just like, oh, my life is so shitty. And I linked her that story and she's like, yeah. Get down. <laughs> Get down, Kondo. <laughs> All right, two last stories. Uh, the uh, No, I'm actually just going to skip that one. That was dumb. We'll just go to this one. Last story. Japanese police filed charges against illegal anime girl Huggy Pillow Cover Seller. There's another pillow cover. What's going on with this country? So I actually have... <laughs> no, so it's... it's Okay, these, these are counterfeit pillow covers being produced and sold online, and then the police, like, file charges against the guy that's making it. Is this something to do with the Filipino mafia as well? And no, no this, is, this is just the otaku in Japan. But this reminds me of a YouTuber who one of my friends really, really hates, but I actually really like her. She's really funny. How do you see your subscriptions in the app? There you go. Okay. So there's this there's this YouTuber that I subscribe to. She's actually a Twitch scream, a streamer. Mm-hmm. Um, her name is Jenny Nicholson. 
No idea. It doesn't matter. She's just this like a kind kind of like little white girl that like talks about fantasy stuff and you know okay. de- stuff like that online all the time. Anyway, so she has like this three hour explanation video on bronies. It's one hour and eleven minutes twenty seven seconds, and it's called the last brony con a fandom autopsy. What's a brony? It's those people who fall fell in love with My Little Pony, but as like grown men. Right. You've never okay. This isn't this also has a Star Trek reference because there's a there's a documentary that was made about this sure. by the character of Q from the TNG. Remember Q? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made a uh he an like exploitive documentary about bronies and he's like hosting it. So uh Josh has put pictures of bronies on the screen. So Alex is seeing this for the first time, so I'm glad I could brain fuck you today. Oh, I want to be in this club. <laughs> Wait, is that oh never mind. Yeah, so bronies are a real thing. And in, in this girl's uh, like autopsy, there's her there's her thumb right there. The girl in the blue shirt, there she is. Uh, the, the she's hugging the pillow of the My Little Pony character pillow, and she said like when she goes to the the Brony Cons, like one of the major products that they sell are these like, you know, non official pillow covers, and she said like a lot of them are let's just say adult themed. Oh right, My, <laughs> what? Some what? And I just like, I was watching this video. I was just like, on a plane. I was just like, this is what I do. I was just like, wow. These, wow. On a plane? On a Were you plane. Not worried about people's eyes looking no. towards I was, your I content? Was like, I was like, if you want to watch this with me, I'll, I'll unplug my head. <laughs> oh, these are like full-size pillows, are they? Yeah, because they can sleep with them. And it's like being with the character or something. There is actually... Are a these Jap- like human size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're Japanese human size. So they're like, they're like 150 centimeters or so. Wow. And so like they... There's this guy who like married his pillow in some pr- ward in Tokyo, and they like officiated. He married his pillow. Okay, I'm not. I'm not making this shit up. This is the thing, guys. There he is. I told you, marry his pillow. My God. I mean, and when you look at the guy, he looks like the guy that would marry his pillow. <laughs> well, <laughs> I suppose if she, if she complains, he headline: can just... Man marries pillow, lives happy life. Well, I mean, no bitching. I I mean... Just stick her in the washing machine if she's been. <laughs> <laughs> That's been our show today, guys. Uh, if you want to be one of our patrons, <laughs> click the link in the description below. All the links to the news articles we mentioned today are in the mm-hmm. are in the. A description. That's been our show today. Thanks, Alex, for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Next time you're here, <laughs> let's have more ridiculously inappropriate stories. All right, bye-bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>